This is Ronald with Coastline Robotics. Welcome to the second part of this tutorial and we're going to continue with the installation of the flight controller. Use 5mm nylon spacers to separate the power distribution board from the flight controller. The CC3D has an arrow that indicates the direction it should be mounted on your aircraft. Usually we must install the board with the arrow facing to the front of the aircraft but this time we will install it with the arrow pointing to the left of your vehicle when you look at it from behind. Use M3 nylon nuts to fix the board. The order of the motors in the CC3D flight controller, when you look at the vehicle from behind, is motor number 1 on the front left, motor number 2 on the front right, motor number 3 on the back right, and motor number 4 on the back left. Follow the graphic guide to connect the ESCs to the flight controller. We must connect the ESC number 1 to the output number 1. Remember that the ESC number 1 has 3 cables, the rest of the ESCs are going to be connected through the harness we made before. In this build we're going to use the Devo 7 radio controller with the RX701 receiver. The CC3D includes a breakout cable to connect the receiver. This cable originally is too long, so I decided to make it shorter to have a cleaner build. Connect the breakout cable to the receiver port on the CC3D. Use double-sided tape to fix the receiver to your vehicle. The motors on the CC3D flight controller must follow a specific order of rotation. Motor number 1 and 3 must spin clockwise. Motors 2 and 4 must rotate counterclockwise. In this case, the motors with black top are clockwise motors. The motors with silver top are counterclockwise motors. Install the motors with the screws provided. Cut 12 heat shrink pieces of about a third of an inch long. Connect and solder the central cable of all ESCs initially. Do the same procedure with all four ESCs. Now before we continue with the motor installation, we must perform a quick setup on the flight controller using the OpenPilot ground control station software. Once we open the software, we must connect the board to the computer using a mini USB cable. Wait until the board reboot and you shouldn't move it at all or the sensor calibration will fail. We must get a steady blinking LED. At this point we're ready. Now when you connect the board for first time to your computer, you might have a notification of the one we're having right now saying that the firmware in the flight controller is not up to date. Well we're gonna solve that problem uh, with this configuration and the most important thing is that our board is being recognized by the software so we can perform the calibration. Now we just hit the vehicle setup wizard and click next. Then we're gonna hit the upgrade button and here is where we're gonna update our firmware version. This might take a few minutes, I'm just gonna speed it up. 
Once the upgrade process is finished, you're gonna get a message saying that the USB was not recognized. All you have to do is disconnect the board uh, to your computer and connect it again. And now we have a board with an updated firmware. I'm gonna click next. I'm gonna select PWM because we're using a PWM receiver. Click next, select the multi-rotor and we're gonna select the quadcopter X configuration. We're gonna set the ESC to rapid ESC. Click next. And click next again. Now we must calibrate the accelerometer and while you do this, you shouldn't move your aircraft at all. The next steps, we're gonna skip them right now because our motors are not connected. So we're just gonna click next, 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 until you reach this page, click save. And we're gonna start with the transmitter setup. You don't have to do anything on your radio. All the configuration is gonna be done through the ground control station software. I'm going to explain the radio calibration in depth in our next episode. Right now, all you have to do is to follow the movement of the sticks on the screen with your radio so the software can map all the channels automatically. You will also have the option to assign an, a couple of auxiliary switches to perform functions like toggling between flight modes or activate an alarm to find your quad in case you lost it. The next step in the software is to identify the endpoints of the sticks. So to do that you will have to center the sticks, click the next button and then move the sticks to their ending positions so the software can identify the endpoints. Now once the software has identified the endpoints, move the sticks to see if they are matching your movement. If they are not matching your movement, you'll have to click on the axis that is not following, so it will reverse the movement. After we do this, we, we click next, and then we're gonna select how we're gonna arm the motors. I'm gonna arm it using the control command your right and I'm gonna assign a time of 10 seconds. Now that we have done this quick calibration, you must turn on the radio transmitter and connect the battery to the flight controller. Wait until the flight controller boots. While it's doing this, please don't move it at all. Now what we need to do is to check the spinning direction of the motors. So before you solder the other two cables, arm your helicopter and pull the throttle a little bit up so you can make your motor start spinning. And if it's spinning properly, then proceed to solder. After you solder, apply heat to the heat shrink and cover the ESCs with tape. You must repeat the same procedure with the other three ESCs. We're gonna be using zip ties to fix the LEDs to the aircraft. Don't miss the next episode where we are going to finish the build and perform a detailed calibration of the flight controller. Thanks for watching.